Welcome back, everyone, and it's time for the May sit rep. Uh, hard to believe. Uh, I feel like I was just doing one of these a couple of weeks ago, which I guess technically I was. We did have the missile attack on Israel from Iran, so we did do, uh, I say, a greater frequency in the last couple of weeks, but it is killer that we're already in May. The weather is turning. We're, we're breaking into the 80s here in Michigan, which is always a good thing because you know, uh, the cold weather, it kind of just, it, it kills you. It runs you down a bit. And it's, it's just, it's nice to have the, the warm weather, get outside, spend some time in the sun, go touch some grass and all that good stuff. Uh, and actually, you know what, um, <laughs> at the time of this release, not the time of this recording necessarily, but the time that you guys are listening to this or, or getting the release of this, I'll actually be in day three of the Orion training group, small unit CQB class that Josh and and I are taking together. Uh, So all kinds of good things going on here. But like I said, it's May, it's time for a sit rep. And there's, uh, there's quite a bit to talk about. Honestly, if you guys are joining us for the very first time, welcome in the Sunday sit rep is something that we try to do on it. A, at least a monthly basis to talk about current events and talk about how they impact us and why it's important as it pertains to your own personal preparedness for the safety of yourself and your family, as well as just gives us the opportunity to talk about some political topics, again, current events, things that are in the news cycle, uh, how they can be impactful, why they're impactful, and just bring our our scope and perspective to some of these issues. Because frankly, you know, mainstream media sucks. Mainstream media has an agenda behind it. And I don't even know if it's possible <clears throat> in 2024, if it's possible to talk about these things without some kind of agenda, without some kind of motivation behind it. Uh, we do our best here to try and bring you our thoughts and feelings, which is why obviously you guys all tune in which is why you you follow us and a lot of you guys reach out and, and have great, great feedback and things to say about it. So we continue to do this. We continue to bring this to you. Uh, and we're going to get into all of it in just a moment here before we start cutting it up for this month's sit rep episode. This is a sponsored podcast, you guys. Again, if you're joining us for the very first time, we want to talk to you about our partners that support all of the efforts that we have and, and, and make here at Prepared Mindset. I want to tell you about some absolutely outstanding companies that will provide great services and great products to you. So I want to start with our friends over at Custom Night Vision. You guys, their website is customnightvision.com, and I really implore you guys to go check it out. We've been talking about night vision a lot recently because it is so attainable on the civilian level. Yes, prices have gone up. Yes, availability has gone down. But the guys at Custom do an absolutely outstanding job of keeping everything stocked. So if you are considering night vision, if you're looking into it, even if you're just in the planning stages, right? You got a little bit of money saved up and you really know that you're not in the in in the ballpark yet, but you want to understand what the cost is. You want to understand what kind of capability you can get. Head on over to customnightvision.com. They have a great chat function built into the site. You can reach out. You can talk to a team member at Custom. The guys there, Kevin and Ben, they do an outstanding job and they will help you and their colleagues will help you to plan and understand what you need and what you don't. It's not all about having the, the greatest dual tube Gen 3 setup with, you know, L3 filmless tubes, you can still be very, very effective with something that doesn't cost quite as much. You can be even, you can be effective with a single tube setup like a PVS-14. Custom has all of this stuff in stock and ready to go for all of you. And they're there to answer questions. They want to provide the most transparent buying experience possible, whether it's for PVS-14 with green phosphor tubes from Elbit or Fatanis, or you're getting into some 31 alphas, right, from L3 with some super high, you know, some super gain tubes or something crazy that's going to cost you, you know, a ton of money because you want the most high end, high speed setup that you can get into. Custom has it all. They also offer lights and lasers, helmets, mounts. They can literally be your zero to one. One stop and one stop shop experience for night vision. You can get on the site, you can get a helmet, a mount, your night vision, your retention, everything you need. Have it mailed to you, and in a couple days, you will be completely capable. Again, guys, it is customnightvision.com. Head on over to the website today, check it out for yourselves, chat with the team, pick up some night vision. Also, want to say thank you to our friends at HRT tactical gear their website is hrttacticalgear.com and you guys should head on over there check out their 
arc belt series, their AWLS handheld lights. Those are the two big things that I've been playing with the most recently. I actually was able to size down my belt. They're able to send me out a, uh, not the, the inner belt that you actually wear through your belt loops, but the core belt of the belt system itself, because actually your boy lost some weight and they were happy to help me out there. I love Love the arc belt system, and I'm actually carrying the AWLS handheld uh, 18650 light with me right now as we speak. Guys, great solutions. The team over at HRT is doing outstanding stuff. Their pouches are some of my favorite on the market. I look forward to being able to play with the dump pouch and their medical pouch. The pistol and rifle mag pouches are probably my absolute tops right now with the perfect retention that they come with. And you can mount them vertically. You can get them on a 30-degree angle, whatever solutions you need for that arc belt system. It's all tip-top, you guys. Again, head on over to hrttacticalgear.com. Look into it for yourselves and pick up some gear. Support HRT for supporting us. Also have to talk about our friends at Lead and Steel. Guys, head to leadandsteel.co. That is their site, and you can check out the PB3 Pandora. That's their pistol optic that everyone's been raging about, and they are actually they are growing, you guys. They're moving into a new facility, a new warehouse, because the demand is there, and they have to have more space. They have to do more, in addition to wanting to do more, so a, a even greater level of quality control than they already have for their PB3 optic, their the LP1 Promethean rifle optic, their all-rounder carbine, their JAG carbine. You guys, they do an outstanding job at lead and steel, and right now there's a sale going on, I believe, still for them moving, and they're trying to clear out some some product you guys can actually pick up a pb3 at a pretty good discounted rate at least at the time of this recording again you can head over to leadandsteel.co check out all the good stuff that ahmad and his team are doing and everything they have in stock there some outstanding optics and some outstanding rifles lastly thank you to 100 concepts guys The light caps, everybody knows about the light caps. That's what put these dudes on the map. They're outstanding. They're a great solution. They're easy to install, and they're cheap to replace if you ever need to. And they are doing even more to improve them. The ruggedized versions, they develop their scope caps, the pro scope caps, which build in an anti-reflective device. Their hex caps, which are the the anti-reflective devices for our red dots. There's all kinds of great stuff going on. And the goal at 100 Concepts is to provide us with great solutions for common issues that we all run into and all face when we're out in the field. So you can head over to 100concepts.com. You can check out their chem light kit and the refills that they have for it. Their paracord QD mount. If you want to reduce your noise signature, they have some awesome, easy to set up and install uh, scrim for your, both your helmet and your packs. And they're working on new sizes for the packs too, for smaller assault packs. Again, talking about their pro caps, hex caps, light caps, all of that good stuff. And their sling hook 2.0, which is in my opinion, absolutely necessary. If you guys are going to be running around with a ruck and a rifle, again, the website is 100concepts.com. Check it out today and go grab yourself some gear. Thank you, of course, to all of those sponsors and partners of ours. Uh, You guys, those are fantastic companies, and we could not be more proud that we get to partner with all of them. So go check it out. Go pick up some gear. You know, keep an eye on the site. They're releasing you know new products and updates all the time. But getting into it for uh, this month's sit rep, uh, you know, it really looking at the news lately and thinking about what I'm seeing in the news. It honestly takes me back right now it's at the at the date of this recording it's may 1st so like i said in the intro here we are breaking into the warmer weather we are getting into summer you know and this time roughly four years ago we were basically in the beginning stages of what a lot of people referred to as the summer of love where we had protests and we had sit-ins and the world was you know i guess uh COVID crazy, you know, we were all very concerned with this, uh, this virus and the, the, the pandemic and how are we going to live? How are we going to move forward? How long is, is life going to look this way? Uh, and, and we've since emerged from that, right? You know, we don't wear the masks anymore. Some people do, um, if they're being overly cautious and I, and I, I do have a level of respect for that only because, uh, if you're worried about getting other people sick and that's why you're wearing it, I appreciate that. I had the conversation the other day with somebody uh, around PTO time at work because a lot of us now, we just have a bank of PTO. We don't have PTO and sick time, um, but we have colleagues right, that will insist that time off is only to be used when you're healthy and you want to go out and enjoy 
uh, vacation or the great weather or go do something fun. And if you're sick, you just go to work, which for some of us, it might be okay. You know, if you work from home or you work some kind of job where it doesn't matter. Uh, but I always used to hate the people that would come in sick as a fucking dog coughing and sneezing all over everything because they didn't want to burn their precious time off to be considerate to their, their coworkers. Um, so if you're wearing a mask to avoid getting other people sick, I respect the hell out of that. If you're concerned because you're around people all the time who are sick, maybe you work in the medical field or something like that. Um, you know, okay, fine. But we are not required to wear masks anymore. Now, all of that aside, right. Um, a lot of the stuff we're seeing in the news cycle right now reminds me of everything that we were seeing four years ago. Donald Trump is coming under a lot of heavy fire, um, a lot of it groundless, which we, you know, everything that, that was done at the end of the, the Trump presidency around the pandemic and stuff, uh, you can pick that all apart. You can also point really easily that just as many or just as much of the other side, the other side of the fence, right, the Democrats, everything that the Democrats pushed on us then was also not true. So uh, rather than say that one side was right and, and one side was wrong, I would just say that leadership in general needs to be better and needed to be better then just as it needs to be better now with the decision making. Granted, there was a large amount of uncertainty. Uh, you know, I don't know that I don't know that a different leader would have done much better. Uh, it, you could pick it apart. You could you could uh, what do we call it? You know, Sunday morning or sorry, Monday morning quarterback the shit out of it and say, oh, well, if you would have done this and this and I would have done this. But those people all have the benefit of hindsight, which at the time in relatively uncharted waters or you know new territory we didn't have that. So, uh, you know, again, I digress. We could pick that apart all we want. Um, but we did experience a lot of protesting that summer coming out of the Trump presidency, going into what eventually became the Biden administration, right? Tons and tons of protesting after George Floyd, right? Black Lives Matter, burning cities, occupations, right? The, the Josh and I have talked about this when Josh has been on the Chop or Chaz, whatever, Capitol, uh, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or uh, Capitol Hill Occupation, whatever, Chaz, Chop, whatever it, the hell it stood for out there in the Pacific Northwest. That was in the news all the time. Uh, first responders were not able to enter that area because they didn't recognize law enforcement, but then they wanted EMTs and medical to come in there to help people who were assaulted or having issues, whatever the case may be, right? And they refused to respond because they could not safely do so. And then, you know, people start screaming, oh, why aren't you coming in here? Why won't you help them? This, you're the bad person. It's your fault. And you just, in general, acting like fucking assholes. Um, <clears throat> and now we look at the news and what are we seeing, right? President Trump is in the middle of a trial, which by all means and all indications, because he's been indicted like on 90 some odd charges or something. I don't I don't have that number in front of me, um, but he's he's brought up on, you know, almost 100 charges. It's closer to 100 than it is to 50. I do know that. And the media is in most accounts doing their best job to bury him. And I know, you know, he could do a lot of stuff different. He could be better. I, he does. He does seem to be staying off Twitter, um, so maybe it's, I'll, I'll say that's a marked improvement for him, but he's in hes in the news all the time. Uh, the liberal media and the left are doing their best to pin all of the country's problems on Donald Trump. We are somehow still four years after the fact. Apparently, everything bad that happens in this country is still the fault of Donald Trump. Joe Biden is coming out and saying it. Oh, inflation was, was here when I got here, Jack. No, it wasn't. Inflation was not here when you got here. You created inflation. Maybe some inflation was on its way, but things have definitely gotten worse under the Biden administration's policies. Um, and, you know, we saw all the protesting on the news, all the violence, the violent protesting, which is somehow deemed to be OK then. Right. Because it was for radical causes and just causes and because it aligned with the liberal agenda, because it was for quote unquote, black lives matter, even though they were destroying black owned businesses and black livelihoods and literally destroying black lives. People were being killed and beaten, but that's okay. So now we fast forward different issue, right? Um, black lives matter as a movement has been, they've, they've come under fire, right? Because the leadership has been exposed to be largely selfish and done very little to actually perpetuate the cause and positively impact black communities. So now the issue is the anti-Israel protesting, which to be clear, the United States is not actually engaged in armed conflict with Hamas 
in faith, in arms with Israel. Um, we are allies with Israel, and yes, we do have service members who are stationed over there who are engaged. But we, as we as a country, are not you know actually declared at war with Hamas or any of the countries in the region, uh, despite the tension over there, which is which is crazy. You know, these rocket attacks we had last month uh, from Iran and everything, it is looking like there's there are problems on the horizon, right? And we have these protests uh, that have basically started here blaming Israel for everything. It's Israel's fault that Hamas took 180 hostages and that Hamas is employing guerrilla tactics and attacking targets, knowing that they are using these guerrilla tactics. If you guys haven't read, um, I think it's uh, Fry the... No, I'm sorry. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of really good books on it. I was looking at a couple different sources. I know Fry the Brain is one book that's on, I think it's Urban Sniping. Um, and then there's another one, I can't remember the title, that's on guerrilla warfare. But I, I point this out to say that guerrilla warfare works in a manner where it becomes difficult for organized armies to attack and react and respond because the guerrilla forces are embedded within civilians. So they're fighting like cowards. They're hiding behind and among civilians, women and children, um, because they are cowards. And then we have these protesters screaming that Israel is killing civilians. Well, they issued evacuation orders. They are not attacking civilian targets, if at all avoidable. From everything I've been told and heard, the Israel Defense Forces or Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, right, is actually doing as much as they can to combat the issue while also protecting civilian lives and civilian livelihood. You can only go so far in war. And I say this as somebody who's never gone, uh, has friends who certainly have, has talked to a ton of people on this podcast who have deployed to active war zones. And there is unfortunately limitations to all of it. There's just only so much that you can do. But we have, they have these protests, people who have no idea about the issues. They have absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on over there, what side they should be supporting or why. It's just the in vogue thing to do as a young white suburbanite protester. And here's what we see in the news is that these college campuses, which have been petri dishes, right? They've been incubators for this ultra liberal mentality and mindset. These universities and not just random universities, you know, like the Northern Michigan Institute of uh, Bilingual Technology or, you know, whatever, that's not a real school, but real schools with real pedigree um, which are hollowed institutions like Brown University and Columbia, Cal Poly and UCLA, UNC Chapel Hill, right? These are all schools that are in the media because there's problems. There's actual occupations of their campuses where protesters are demanding food and water from the college uh, administration. And these are like huge encampments that are basically closing down these campuses. My, mind you, the cost of education only continues to go up especially as President Biden is now continuing to try and forgive billions and billions and billions of dollars of student loan debt. And these people are on campus making it impossible for students to learn, making it impossible for faculty to teach. And these protests, they're not, they're not peaceful. They are becoming violent. And not just one of them, not just two of them, most of them are becoming violent. Not all of them, but most of them are becoming violent to the point where police agencies are having to step in and they're having to break up and shut down these occupations. And they're, you know, they're being screamed at, they're having things thrown at them. They're being called bootlickers. They're being called fascists because they are defending the uh, institution or the government or whatever, you know, uh, larger overall body that you want to uh, refer to in whatever context, right? But they're largely protecting the people that aren't part of these protests, that don't want to be part of these protests, and are, are trying not to be impacted. And I get it. The point of a protest is to disrupt daily life, to gain attention and notoriety for your cause with the hope that it will spur change, right? I, I get that that is the point of a protest, and there are people that think that, that these are just super effective protests and there's nothing wrong with it. However, that's that's not totally true. There there is something wrong with it when you start to when you are harassing people, when you're verbally assaulting people, when you're creating a hostile environment. That that's that's a problem. 
you know, and it's funny because as soon as people show up to push back and combat this, they're the first people to start acting like a victim, right? They're the first people to start screaming about how they're, you know, they're not the aggressor, they're the victim, even though there's 20 of them screaming at two people uh, for wearing, you know, a shirt with American flag on it. Uh, and that that's a, you know, that makes you an extremist if you wear a shirt that, that has an American flag. Um <clears throat> You know, and now we're actually starting to see, unfortunately, we are seeing some of these universities, some of these institutions, right, which are very wealthy. They get tons of money in tuition. They get tons of money in donations. They're actually caving to this pressure. Um, Brown University actually reached an agreement with the protesters to end in order to end the occupation. They made an agreement with these fucking idiots uh, saying that they will consider divesting themselves from Israel. In, in totality, so whatever that means, however, Brown as a university is invested in, in Israel um, in October, which I assume means that when Brown votes on such matters or when they're legally able to look at and reconsider, uh, you know, their investment portfolio and things like that, that, oh, yeah, we promise we, we will. And I don't know how that was reached. Uh, I hope they didn't sign anything legally binding, because if I were like, no one's going to tell me how I'm going to spend my money, where I'm going to invest my money and how I'm going to save my money. Other than me, I'm going to act in my best interest and in line with my beliefs. If some asshole wants to come sit on my front lawn, I mean, we're going to have fucking issues and I'm not going to give them what they want. Uh, These are terrorist tactics, you guys. I mean, not terrorist in not terrorist in the way that we think of people who commit massive, massively violent acts in the name of their cause. But it's it's straight out of a terrorist playbook to use fear of what may come. Uh, to drive a reaction or action. And I mean, I don't know how else to say it, you know. Um, Again, UCLA has had to cancel classes due to these protesters. Cal Poly had to change their commencement ceremony due to protests. Um, And Donald Trump has even come out in the media to suggest that all of these protests, which it's odd, right? It is odd that they're so coordinated at the exact same times across the country, right? Because Cal Poly and UCLA are on the opposite side of the continent from Columbia and Brown. But yet we have these coordinated protests uh, against, they're all, you know, anti-Israel protests. Um, and, and Trump suggests it's to distract from his trial. And you know what? I don't, I don't like to get the tinfoil out, but I mean, when you start to see these news stories breaking um, and video clips coming out of some of these jurors, right, just basically admitting that even after they went through, uh, you know, the selection process and everything, admitting that they they are biased, that no matter what happens in the trial, they're going to they're going to find Trump guilty because he's terrible. There's actual videos of that floating around. People have admitted it, uh, which, by the way, is illegal. And that those individuals need to be brought up on charges. Um they weren't going to let Trump attend uh, his son, I believe his name is his son Barron's uh, high school graduation. Now, that did happen. The, du- the judge did ultimately allow that to happen. But they were going to potentially not allow him to, you know, uh, put a stay, a temporary stay or a hold or pause or whatever on trial just for Trump to be able to go to that, which is one day, one evening, right, to be able to attend something which only happens once in life. You only graduate from high school once. You can go to college and graduate multiple times if you want to, but a high school graduation only happens once in a child's life. And it's super shitty that this man and his children, more specifically, or more importantly, his children, are being impacted by this shit, which is a complete and total political circus. And I can honestly say that with relative certainty and relative confidence because he hasn't been found guilty of anything yet. This is not like when Bill Clinton was put on trial and he was impeached and and they did find the, you know, he committed these lewd acts and things were awful. We, hell, we even we have Stormy Daniels, the porn star who alleged that she, you know, uh, had these awful interactions with Donald Trump. And he's such a, a lewd and crude and awful human and a terrible man and everything. She came out and signed an affidavit saying that she never did after the fact. But the media is not covering that. And all these other charges and all these other things that they're lining up. And it's just to burn the news cycle. Because we have all these protests going on, now we're talking less about the trial. Because here's the thing. there, There's blood in the water. I, I really believe that. And I think that the Democratic Party uh, knows that as well. And that's why they're trying to draw eyes and ears and clicks away from everything to do with 
with Donald Trump's trial. They can't just back out now because that's basically admitting that they were doing it for purely political reasons and they were abusing their authority through the Department of Justice and our legal system, um, which, by the way, they've, they've already had to dismiss prosecutors and p- members of the, the prosecution team because of personal biases in this case, um, which is very telling, extremely telling, so much so that I don't know how this case hasn't actually been thrown out yet, um, except to say that the judge is probably in, you know himself an extremely biased uh, judge, um, and I'd say probably brings a lot of shame and dishonor to the bench on, on which he sits. That's my opinion. Um, I think it's sad when, when, when it becomes this obvious we have these kinds of headlines, and it's so obvious that it's a political hit job. Uh, they're doing their very best. It, they they tried to have you know Trump thrown off or blocked on the ticket in I want to say it was Maryland and Colorado, right? That got thrown out. So the next goal is that we'll just indict him again. We'll just bring him up on more charges. We'll just you know, uh, and these protests draw eyes away from that because the more you the the media and the more I think this is my my thought on this is that the more American citizens see Trump being scapegoated by the media, by the government, by basically the Democratic Party, the more votes he gains. People people are not nearly as dumb as I think a lot of our elected leadership would like to believe that they are. Um and I and I, I bring this up very specifically because People who four years ago were, uh, I think the term is any Trumpers, right? Uh, They would vote for anybody but Donald Trump. Anybody's a better solution. Well, you did that. You voted for Joe Biden, who is too old to serve. His faculties are gone, has spent 40 years in politics and accomplished literally nothing while also being a huge racist um, and and flip-flopping on all sorts of different, you know, policies and things. And Kamala Harris, who was one of the, I believe, first two or three people to drop out of the, the presidential election and probably one of the most underqualified vice presidents that we've ever had in the history of this country. You can say all you want about, you know, Mike Pence. People had a lot of fun with the stupid video of the fly landing on his hair and calling him a giant pile of shit. You can say he's a extreme conservative or extreme Catholic or, or, or whatever, whatever, right? You could say that those things can still be accurate. And I would still counter with Mike Pence is more qualified to, to hold that office in that position than Kamala Harris says. Kamala Harris has been put in charge of the southern border issue. And let's look at how well that's gone. Those are, to me, the two main issues in this election is the border security, which has only gotten worse. It seems like every day now there's another story. Unfortunately, it's so fucking tragic. Another story of uh, of a schoolboy who's stabbed to death by an illegal immigrant or a woman who was assaulted and raped or murdered. Right. People were just the terrible things that are happening all at the hands of these illegals because we, we can't secure the border. We won't secure the border. Texas is doing everything they can to secure it. And so the illegals are coming through in states that are sympathetic and align with the Democratic uh, you know, party and just letting people letting people cross over. So then they come through in places, you know, other states, Arizona, New Mexico, whatever, and they do and they and then they spread them out across the country. And we are still uh, at least up until relatively recently, I don't know, um, there was the busing of illegals up into cities like New York and Chicago. And then once you start to experience all of the issues with the illegals and all the crime and things, then we're starting now. Then it's an issue, right? We're finally starting to see elected leadership come out and, and make public statements because now they're going into lockdown and and protect mode because they don't want to lose their political careers because ultimately city leadership, state level leadership, they're not going to be protected by the federal level government. They're just not. That's not how politics works. It's every man for themselves. So they have no choice. But then to come out and speak against these things and talk about, oh, now now we have to change. Oh, there's no room here in New York for these people. Oh, it's terrible. There's no room, right? The crime rates in cities like New York and Chicago were already super fucking shitty. And now you're going to go ahead and give them a direct injection of illegal aliens who don't have to abide by laws, who can't be tracked because they don't have a social security number, uh, and they get to do whatever the fuck they want. And these people are are, are released on... You know, uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm completely beside myself. It's very upsetting. Um, they're released on probation, right? And it's like, how are you going to keep track of them? They're not even citizens here. None of these people pay into our system. They don't pay taxes, which, by the way, is another main gigantic issue. And we want to distract from all of this. 
don't look at what the left hand's doing, only look at what the right hand's doing. Meanwhile, they're loading these states up, doing everything they can for the census to A, get more seats in, in Congress so that they can have more representation on assuming you know the Democratic side, because the Democratic Party is the one that let all these people in. And then, oh, we're also fighting, not even lobbying, fighting to have looser elective, uh, you know, laws and election laws, election processes and things so that we can we can load our government with Democrat lawmakers that are going to push their policies, push their agendas and continue to deteriorate the overall integrity of our country. Um, and that's not to me, that's not it's not a political thing. Like you want to talk about labor unions, you want to talk about abortion, you want to talk about taxes and things. OK, cool. We can talk about all of that stuff and I can respect you have a difference of opinion. What I can't respect and what I can't understand is how anybody, regardless of political affiliation, can look at what's going on in the media, can look at what's going on with these protests and look at what's going on with this presidential administration. <clears throat> and in all honesty and in truth, tell me that they agree with any of that. They are in favor of of more people in this country when we already have so little to go around and taxes are so high, interest rates are so high, things are so bad. You want more people to come in here? You want to put more strain on this system? But I, I, I don't I don't understand. Where do you think that there that the, the relief is going to come from? We just get to a point where the government's just going to say, "Oh, hey, we're just going to give food to everybody." Like we're not going to ever reach some communist or socialist utopia. I really do think that's where the there's a lot of people in this country think that if we if things get bad enough, we will go to that. Well, guess what? The countries in South America tried it. It doesn't work. I think it's Venezuela just had that actor get elected. And the first thing he did was like eviscerate 60 percent of government. You know, uh, it's just it is crazy right now. And these protests, they it looks like we're just looking for a rehashing and a revamping um, uh, a reimagining. You know, we talk about that with movies all the time, right? Cause there's no original ideas left in Hollywood. There's no original ideas left in politics, guys. We are looking at a reimagining of the same playbook that we experienced four years ago. In my opinion, if I had to like, if I had to put money on it, if I had to make a guess, I really, I think that's why we're seeing these, these violent protests. I think experiences from four years ago have kind of shaped how we react to it. I think there's probably a little less tolerance for the bullshit because here's the thing. Uh, some of these cities like in Minneapolis and things or in Minnesota, I'm sorry, um, are still recovering from those riots. There are businesses that were bombed out and burned out and livelihoods that were destroyed. People are still rebuilding and recovering from that because keep in mind, Oh, we had to social distance. So after all that summer, right? They burned out those businesses. Things were not safe all year long. You get into the winter and up here in the northern states, if you guys are listening to this and it doesn't get, you know, below 50 where you live, uh, you can't do construction work when it's 12 degrees outside. You just can't. People, it's not safe to work out it in extended periods of time. Uh, there's a lot of the construction process that can't be done. So you won't even, in many instances, weren't able to start the construction process until, you know, uh, the second quarter optimistically of 2021, maybe even later, if you're still working through the insurance process, things like that, right? There are uh, all of this just to say guys that businesses, you know, insurance doesn't cure everything. There's a lot of people who are impacted by the last round of these protests that we, again, our administration, uh, turned a blind eye to, Oh, we're in favor of all that. That's peaceful protesting. The media sits there and trumpets it and, Oh, it's mostly peaceful protesting. Oh, mostly. Gotcha. I don't think you understand what that word means. Um, so it, it's it's really messed up right now. Um, and it, if it doesn't remind you of, of four years ago, I would I would honestly question that um, because it may be a different reason. But the behaviors are all the same. People in masks. I don't want to you know, I don't know if it's for sure Antifa or any of that shit. Right. People in masks holding foreign flags. Uh, being violent and acting like assholes and basically being defended by our own federal government because it aligns with their political uh, ideologies and political plans. I mean, we have our own elected leadership in Congress waving Ukrainian flags instead of American flags as we are voting for billions and billions of dollars to be sent overseas as our own country and our own economy is starting to crumble from within. It is a terrible time right now. Um, and I don't even, I'm not going to sit here and say that I know the answer because I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, the only, the only hope we have is that Donald Trump is completely acquitted. Donald Trump runs, wins the election. He'll fix everything because I, I don't know that. I don't know that anybody, are we too far gone? Is this, 
what leads to over the next 150 years, the downfall uh, and collapse of the United States? I mean, I sure as shit hope not. A lot of people want to bring that shit up. For whatever reason, there's a lot of people in our community that's obsessed with Roman history and and the downfalls of civilization. Um, And we've talked about that before, too. Guys want to romanticize the concept of us just going into all out bleak. Uh, you know, dystopian times because, you know, there's some, there's some sort of badass that'll just be able to, with their own skills, uh, you know, kill and rob everybody. And uh, the other guy that they know on the other side of the internet is just a loot drop. Wait, it, it's guys, it is not that. It's not. It's it would be really, really shitty. And people want to everyone wants to blame somebody else. You know, you got a ton of people. They Oh, it's all the banking system's fault. It's all their fault that things aren't better now. Honestly, there's enough blame to go around for a lot. I think our biggest issue is personal accountability. You know, people don't want to take accountability for their actions. People don't want to hear that. Yeah, things are worse and that they were part of the problem. It's the same thing we talk about with gun control, which, again, still persists and is still part of the Biden uh, administration's agenda is trying to take away guns, trying to to pass even more uh, intrusive and I would dare say crippling gun control legislation that doesn't actually have any hope of stopping violent crime. It just has every hope and every intention of disarming American citizens because it makes us easier to control. And if you don't believe that that's what this is about, I I urge you look back at the last four years, look at four years ago. You can't leave your home. People's businesses were shut down. People were arrested. People were jailed for not listening to the government. It was a very dark time in our history, which oddly for something so catastrophic, we don't look back on very often in the mainstream media. It's not like, like when nine 11 happened, that didn't go away for a very long time and it's, it should never go away. But we saw every month for several years, we saw that coverage. We were talking about what came out of that and what happened and why. All of a sudden now, though, nope, we don't talk about everything that went on during the pandemic. We don't. What happened to all these uh, mutations and different strains of the virus and things we ought to be concerned with? Oh, that's right. We figured out that the vaccine mandates were uh, unconstitutional and illegal. And by the way, people who have taken all the vaccines are actually worse in, 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 more, in far worse health and in far dire straits now than the people that didn't or took maybe only the first round of the vaccine. It's, it's a dark, dark proposition right now. You guys, it's, it it sucks. It's shitty. And yeah, you got to have a certain amount of tin foil built into the lining of your, your baseball cap or your, or your, your bump helmet, you know, um, for some of this stuff, because it does, it starts to feel super fucking weird. You know, I don't love sitting here talking about, I think that the government's out to try and like <clears throat> screw people over, but there's a shitload of evidence to support that hypothesis. Look at the tax code, for instance. Um, and, and yes, I say this as somebody who had to pay several thousands of dollars in taxes because nobody knows how much withholding we need to have. Um, and it's impossible to tell. And what is the government going to do? Oh, that's right. Joe Biden is going to raise taxes and he's going to stop tax relief because what does the government need to do to get people to fall in line with what appears to be their socialist agenda? They need people to depend on the government. They need to depend on government spending, government programs, and what drives all of that? What drives all the hundreds of thousands of employees he's added during his time and the hundreds of thousands of IRS agents that he's added in during his uh, administration? Tax dollars our hard-earned money being taken from us for all the purposes which don't actually benefit us. I really wonder sometimes, like all of these government programs everyone says are so important, I don't ever see any of them. Personally, I don't see, I don't ever see any of that. Oh, it's for the, you know, uh, underprivileged youth and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's fucking great. Where is it? Show me where it is and I'll stop bitching about it but I don't ever see any of it. I don't ever see any of these government programs. I see more from local bonds and things for school districts to do improvements on security and add on to buildings and to buy equipment for the music department and the science department and things. But at the federal government level where all of our tax goes, I don't, I don't see it guys, but, um, Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I know I get I get pretty worked up, and uh, you know pretty soon we we get into things, and you know we hit the forty. These are these are supposed to be shorter shorter episodes by design and by nature. Um, I always go, you know, I'm going to keep this one around 30 minutes. And as I'm like sitting here recording this, uh, thinking about it, we're we're rolling to 
<clears throat> we're rolling to almost 40 minutes um, because there's there's a lot to say. Um, and a lot of this I've said before, and I'm not going to stop saying it. You know, it's the purpose of having a podcast and, and thankfully, right, First Amendment, right to free speech is that you can be critical of what's going on and you're, you're entitled to that opinion. You know, I, I think there's probably there's some people in this country think we are in a strong economy right now. I don't I don't know how, uh, but they believe that this this is a strong economy and it's the strongest it's ever been. And everything's fucking great because the news tells them that despite their dollar going, you know, not going as far as it once did, uh, despite groceries being up 40 percent, despite you know everything else going on. But this, this is just my thoughts and feelings. Um I hope they align with you guys or at the very least get you thinking, right? So what we're always about here is thinking and learning. So um, I appreciate you all listening to this one, hanging out with us, uh, checking out everything we got going on. Uh, there'll be more coming this week, right? Going to uh, get back on track with guest discussions, do hopefully a, a debrief of the the Orion training group class and everything Josh and I went through and, and learned and experienced and um, good stuff coming, you guys. So stay safe out there. And like we always say, work hard, train smarter, and be prepared.